But hey, we all have to make our own experiences. We all have our own journey back to God. We all come from God and we all return to God one way or the other. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react again to Leo Gura from actualized.org. The last time I reacted to Leo Gura must have been almost a year ago by now. Back then, I criticized him quite harshly because of his claim of being God. Now I heard he came around and he's addressing his pitfalls and the danger of of psychedelics. I'm going to give the video a fair shot. However, it is almost an hour long. So therefore, we're going to skip ahead and see what he has to say. Let's talk about the dangers of psychedelics. Let's. As you probably already know, I'm a huge advocate for psychedelics, using them for personal development and for spiritual development to raise your consciousness. And there are a lot of immature people who go into psychedelics who don't do their research and don't think through some of the stuff that could potentially occur. Well, this is good to see, but nothing new. Anybody that's truly explored the space of psychedelics, myself included, comes to the same conclusion after a while. Not many people know this, but even the great psychonauts like Terence McKenna in their later days actually stopped using psychedelics because they start facing the dangers of it. That was a bad trip, man. It was real bad. But in the beginning, psychedelics are alluring. It seems like the holy grail. And this is when people start sharing their message. I did that too here on my YouTube channel. Leo Gura, on the other hand, has 1 million subscribers and now the damage is done. Let's see what he has to say. Let's see what he realized. When you're using psychedelics. So for that reason, and precisely because I'm such a huge advocate of them and I tend to speak so positively about them, I wanted to do one episode that just focuses exclusively on the negatives and the dangers. Uh, another danger is falling into chronic usage. So my personal advice is not to use psychedelics more than once every two weeks. <laughs> Have I, I get the feeling that you will circle back on this statement as well. In that rule myself in the past? Yes, I have. I've, I've done a period of 30 days straight of 5-MeO-DMT. High that doses. Heavy. That was a very crazy experience. I have a whole episode about that. You can go find it where I talk about that. But that was done in a very deliberate, almost scientific experiment-like way just to see what actually happens. See, I like to experiment with my... <laughs> so to see what's going to happen is a scientific experiment type way. Listen, I'm not knocking you. I did crazy stuff myself. I went to the Amazon jungle. I was drinking ayahuasca. I was tripping on mushrooms almost every day myself. So I get it. It just sounds funny. Self-inquiry, self-experience, direct experience is, of course, the way to go if you truly want to know. Nobody can show you, tell you the truth. You will have to experience it yourself so you know what is what. I totally understand. However, by just relying on yourself, you have no reference point outside of yourself. And that is all right if you would keep your wisdom to yourself until you fully actualized it. See what I did there and understood what you're preaching. You, on the other hand, decided to preach to your audience of 1 million subscribers that you are the Messiah, that you are God, that those people should suicide themselves. This is where the problem lies. In consciousness, I do all sorts of weird experiments like that. But for normal people, I don't recommend something like that. Because if you start to use these psychedelics chronically, what's going to happen is that they will they will erode your mind and your sense of Don't reality figure. and your life will turn upside down. So they will erode your mind. Your life will turn upside down, but you should take them every two weeks. Where is the logic? And this is why I say at some point you will circle back on that statement as well. Why should anybody believe you right now? You already made false claims and you fell into deception. What are you doing now? Now you had another realization of, hey, let's take it moderately. 
you can see that this is very dangerous yet again, but you are capitalizing quite literally on your subscribers. And you will stop being able to think straight. Yeah. And in fact, that, that did happen to me during my 30 day trial of <laughs> experiment of 5-MeO DMT. By the end, by the end of those 30 days, I didn't even make it to 30 days. I only did about 28 days. Um, the last two days, I didn't even need to take any more because I was constantly high. I was just, I had so much 5-MeO-DMT in my system that for the last two days, it was like I was on 5-MeO-DMT 24-7 <laughs> without taking any. And uh, <laughs> it was getting to the point where like it was really, really interfering with my with my mind and my sense of reality in my life. You think? So if I continued any further, it would have started to become disastrous. So I stopped. Um, and that was a good experiment for me to try because now I can I can teach from that wisdom that I gained. But <sighs> yeah, but that is exactly the issue that I just talked about. It which wisdom exactly? Now you realize that there are side effects. Don't you understand by now, especially after a 30 day experiment, that those messages are highly subjective and personal. Even if you had the I am realization, the I am God realization, don't you understand by preaching those things, you are creating a mess for vulnerable people. And now yet again, instead of reflecting introspectively and seeing what you have learned and where you have fallen short, you yet again go online and decide to teach people. You're not a teacher. Now, I would advise you not to do that. In fact, I recommend that you take long periods between trips to integrate. Two weeks. Even doing psychedelics twice a month. Really, it's too much. <laughs> if you do that consistently. Uh, and there you can see that your mind still is not straight. Really, I'm not trying to attack you, to judge you or whatever. You just mentioned every two weeks should be fine. A couple of minutes later, you say, oh, actually, that is too much as well. Which one is it? Make up your mind. What is your channel truly about? I know that many people watch you. But just because many people do something doesn't make it good. Just because many people are attracted to something doesn't make it good. We live in a totally fallen creation and on top of that in absolutely horrific times. If we go by the mainstream standard of appreciation of beauty, we will see that most people are attracted to utter dirt. That is the truth of it. You are misleading spiritually vulnerable people. That is it. Please sort it out for yourself and then start sharing if you must. But do not pretend to be some sort of teacher. The great prophets, people that were considered enlightened, such as the Buddha, never saw themselves as teachers. Certainly, you're not going to be able to integrate everything that they're revealing to you. So be careful about that. And if you start using it chronically, what's going to happen is... Uh, it's going to become a crutch, a crutch and a sort of addiction. And you're going to use it as an escape from actually doing the real manual labor that you need to do to develop yourself and grow yourself. I absolutely agree with that. It is very common in the psychedelic community. I always saw psychedelics as a seminar of sorts. You go into that realm, you learn something, but then it's all about applying it in the real world. The real world, this creation, is the real battleground. This is where we learn. This is why we came here. We are here incarnated in order to learn in the flesh. This is what this creation is about. It is a learning experience for us. Therefore, we don't have to practice escapism all the time in order to learn something. We shouldn't rely on spiritual experiences over and over and over again to get the memo. The real lesson is learned here. Another trap that can happen and danger is the danger of misinterpreting various kinds of mystical visions that you can have oh, on yeah. psychedelics. Big so time. You're going to have all sorts of different visions and insights will be revealed to you. But the thing is, is that you still have an ego. <laughs> yep. Maybe not at the peak, but when you come back down, the ego is still going to be there. And the ego is going to try to make sense of all these crazy 
experiences you've had, and I guarantee you it's going to corrupt them, and it's going to try to co-opt them and to use them towards its own selfish purposes. And here is where you run into the problem of zendevilry, false notions of enlightenment, a messiah complex, you get a giant big head about all Mm -hmm. this, you start to proclaim yourself to be God, and you start to tell everybody that you're God and how great you are and how powerful you are, and now Mm -hmm. you think you have abilities to heal people and to change the world, to awaken Mm -hmm. everybody, and this can get very dangerous. All right, I have to salute you, credit where credit is due. We can see that you're trying to do the right thing here. Obviously, you're talking about yourself because you declared yourself God. You talked about healing practices and what not. Now you came around, you understood your mistakes, you understood your deception. And now I hope you're trying to warn people of yourself. Yes, that would be the true ego liberation if you could step out of your teaching persona and start telling people to not follow you. That would be great. That would be a true step away from the ego. Because, hey, I totally agree with everything that you just said. But it seems to me that you still do not personalize it to such an extent to understand that we are truly talking about your ego here. Your ego that created your YouTube channel, your ego that is driving you towards those psychedelics, which is seeking more spiritual experiences. If you stop and reflect and see that, then you can truly share some wisdom, basically unintentionally, unknowingly, just by being you. But you're still caught in that teaching frame where you find yourself now warning people about the pitfalls. Can't you see the deception? You're still caught in it. You might get the idea to build a cult. You might get the idea that you can now, that now you're qualified to teach people. And then of course, what you're yeah. teach- <laughs> Somebody could think that. Teaching them is some corrupt version of this, of the truth. And so just be very careful because Your mind is very self-deceptive, and it's especially self-deceptive when you come down from a high mystical experience. And then these visions you have, you can have all sorts of mystical visions, but they don't necessarily mean what you think they mean at face value. Yeah, Your mind can easily imagine and hallucinate all sorts of stuff. Maybe in, you know, you do some mushrooms, a heroic dose of mushrooms, and then you experience Jesus coming to you because you're from a Christian tradition. So to you, it's Jesus. Jesus comes to you and Jesus delivers a a personal message to you that now you are the messenger of Jesus here on earth. And then you actually believe that. And then you come back down from the trip and now you actually believe that you are the, the disciple of Christ who has been ordained to convert all the heathens to Christianity or something like that. See that demonic little smile there? It is quite fascinating to me to see that Christianity is constantly under attack, especially within the New Age. The New Age fails to recognize that there is a history of spiritual seeking within humanity. They shun all the work that has been done prior by church fathers, by spiritual seekers, by world religions. They do not want to hear about God. They want to be God because this spiritual enlightenment that they seek is essentially an ego sport. They cannot imagine to humble themselves and to belong to a world religion because this is what all the normies have done prior to them. So if all the normies have done it, they cannot be a truth in it. They cannot humble themselves before an Abrahamic God, for example. There will be too much to ask. They have to find it themselves. They have to ridicule religion altogether. There cannot be any truth find in any of it. That is the first premise of the new age and then they find themselves reinventing the wheel over and over and over again and getting high on their own supply if you will they're getting high on their own grandiosity but in reality all of this already has been explored it is nothing new talking about hinduism buddhism and then getting into the abrahamic faiths all of those spiritual lessons have been already witnessed. You can learn it for yourself. You can experiment for yourself. Nobody is stopping you. But when you present it on YouTube, 
It is so blatantly obvious that you have no idea what you're talking about. It is so blatantly obvious that you're a novice to the spiritual realm. It is so blatantly obvious that you never looked into the real spiritual schooling of any world religion because you denounced it. And now you sit here, make fun about Jesus. Listen, man, do you really believe that you're the first one that comes up with the idea of a false vision about Jesus? History is full with false visions about Jesus. This is not a great example about anything. In the Orthodox Church, this is called prelist, which means it is spiritual deception. And guess what? We fall all victim to it. How can you know that you are well prepared? It is like going to a war zone without any type of military training. Of course, you will get injured. And if not, then you got really, really lucky. That is it. Of course, we need some sort of schooling, some sort of practice in order to understand what we are seeing, in order to understand how to put it into context. Again, I'm not against experimentation at all. I did it myself. But what we see here is so juvenile and it doesn't seem that he truly understood that he has been misled and probably still is deceived. You see, the psychedelics, they will I see. exacerbate any kind of uh, biases and self-deceptions that you have going in your mind. Deceptions, yes. So it's very important that for you to gain the most out of psychedelics that you actually have a pure mind. A mind yep. that has inquired into itself outside of the psychedelic trip mm. and has cleared and purged out various kinds of biases and egotisms and shadow sides and selfishness. Because How if do you we do don't, that? if you have this dirty, corrupt mind, you have your mystical vision, it's going to come back, you're going to come... I actually like the wording, this dirty, corrupted mind. And this is exactly what we talk about when we talk about sin. Sin defiles the image of God, sin defiles the vessel, and therefore your vessel, let's say your bottle, is dirty and the water that you pour into the bottle will get dirty as well. It's an analogy in order to paint a picture. And I agree with you, but this is exactly the question now. How do you purge the vessel if it is not done by psychedelics? How do you stay away from sin is the question. Back down and then you're going to reinterpret it and, and then you're going to corrupt it with all the corruptions in your own mind. It's going to all get corrupted, all mixed together. You won't be able to tell the truth from the bullshit, from the mystical vision, from the selfish personal needs you have and the egotisms and shadow sides that you have. It's all yep. going to mix together and then it's going to turn into this toxic mystical stew and then you're going to mm. go run around trying to infect everybody else with it. I would love to see Leo scratching the you and addressing himself. As I said, that would be the greatest practice of a non-attachment, if you will. This would be a great way to get away from your ego and actually address you. Because we all know that you are talking about yourself. It is quite obvious. And it's what I would call Zen devilry. It's also possible that you have some sort of mystical vision or awakening even and then you come back down and now you think you fully understand reality when you don't you only saw one facet you don't you a small facet you of the truth not the whole truth mm -hmm. there's many facets i have an episode called the many facets of awakening go check that out there's at least a dozen or more facets to awakening and it usually takes you multiple trips over a period of months and years to assemble all the facets and to see the big picture. My question there is, are you awakened yet? Because how do you know? Now you're trying to create a construct. Now you try to make sense of it. Now you say there are certain layers of awakening, which is all fine and dandy. But the question is, how do you know? Are you really at the peak? This is as if I would talk about bodybuilding, what it means to be Mr. Olympia. But I've never been Mr. Olympia. I've never been a competitive bodybuilder. I can talk about hobby bodybuilding. I can talk about my accomplishment within bodybuilding. But I cannot talk about what it takes to become Mr. Olympia. So if you would be truly awakened, then this would make sense. But like this, it is again the blind leading the blind. One or two trips is not going to be enough. So it's easy to misinterpret some of these visions or insights or to think that you got it all figured out when actually you don't. And so yeah. you do have to be very careful about that. Just be aware that 
you can certainly deceive yourself about awakening. I'll rest and my mystical case. visions. So who tells us that you are awakened if you can be deceived? Hmm? And you can misinterpret those and you can misinterpret them very badly. Yeah. So be aware of that. Be the aware next of danger that. is the pain of being disconnected from God, as I call it. So what will happen if you're doing psychedelics properly is that you will eventually reach a stage of God consciousness, where you become conscious of God. And these are going to be some of the most beautiful and profound experiences you've ever had in your life. It will be the most important thing that's ever happened to you. And it's going to be the most beautiful thing. And then you're going to fall out of it. You're going to lose it the next day. Fall from grace. And then you're going to wonder, well, how do I get it back? And then God itself will become like the thing that you chase. You will become intoxicated with God, with the idea of becoming God or being one with God or the feeling of God's love and all this. It's so intoxicating, this, this infinite love is so intoxicating that it's going to pain you just going through your everyday life being disconnected from this love and from God. This could potentially get so bad, you might even get suicidal because you might say to yourself, well, what's the point of living here in this material existence? Why do I have to go to my crappy job, to my crappy family, to my crappy wife, with my crappy children, and my crappy friends, when I should be up there in heaven with God? That's really sad if you think like that. And then you might start having suicidal thoughts. Or you just might be dreaming about the next time you can do psychedelics. It's like, well, okay, uh, I can't wait to come back home from my work and to do more psychedelics. And you do that every day. And then it becomes a uh, becomes an addiction for you where you're using it as an escape from material existence and obligations and survival. Yes, and I absolutely agree with that, Leo, yet again. This is why I say we need some sort of framework, some sort of steering wheel, some sort of guidance here in this realm, something that keeps us on the straight path. How do we do that? Only through repentance. How do we reconnect to God? Through prayer. How do we reconnect to God? Through fasting. How do we experience the love of God? How do we experience God? Only in silence. In orthodoxy, it is called the Hesychast, which is a silent prayer. I talk about this all the time here on this channel. It is a daily practice. In the morning, at night, you pray without ceasing. You constantly pray and get in communion with God. This is what you are really seeking here. Everybody hears it. It is a lack of God. This is why you crave those psychedelic experiences. You describe it yourself perfectly. I do not have to add anything to it. You experience the love of God, but when you are here in your vessel, you are severed from that love. And that is an unnatural state to begin with. We have to return to the Father, first to the physical, then to the spiritual Father. How do we do that? We have to forgive our parents, we have to forgive our enemies in order to recreate this inner peace, because the kingdom of heaven is within. It is all within you. You do not need any more psychedelics. I am not a teacher. I'm not here to give you any advice. I'm just saying what I see. And if I were you, I would stay away from psychedelics for a long, long time and clear myself out first. But that's just me. And it can, it can just actually lower the quality of your life. So counterintuitively what's happened when I started using psychedelics is that I had the most profound mystical experiences, some of the peaks of my life, the best experiences of my life were on psychedelics. But then when I was just going through my ordinary life, I noticed that I was actually less happy than I used to be before psychedelics. Because yep. before psychedelics, my ordinary life, that's all I knew, and I was kind of living in this blissful ignorance. Once you actually realize infinite love and heaven and God, but then you can't inhabit that 24-7, your ordinary life then seems very pale by comparison. Hmm. 
and so that is very sad and just leads back to what i was saying you severed the connection with god just by experiencing god on psychedelics you won't establish a connection that will last it is like a seminar as i already said you can get a glimpse of god you can have a profound spiritual experience all of that is beautiful however it cannot be integrated and kept you will need a practice you will need a faith you will need a certain religious for the lack of better words behavior in order to incorporate this in order to cleanse your vessel on a daily basis in order to experience god on a daily basis otherwise you will suffer i'm not a psychologist i do not know what happened in your childhood but it seems that you're longing for that love it seems like you experienced a cut in love, be it from parents, be it from other loved ones. It seemed like you lost this connection to love physically here and then ultimately to God. This is where all the seeking comes into place. But hey, we all have to make our own experiences. We all have our own journey back to God. We all come from God and we all return to God one way or the other. It's challenging to cope with that. You have to sort of relearn to appreciate just the paleness of mundane existence because it's so pathetic compared to the peaks you can achieve on but it's not at all it's quite interesting to me now i haven't touched psychedelics in i believe roughly two years or so and hearing this it is surprising to me because this is not how I see the world at all. This is not some sort of make-believe, some sort of wishful thinking. But I truly experience this world, this creation, as infinitely beautiful. I'm not seeking any psychedelic experience whatsoever. Just looking at nature, I'm marveling at God's creation. It is absolutely mesmerizing every single day, no matter where I am. Even in big crowded cities, I'm marveling at this creation. It is utterly beautiful. And I experienced high peaks on psychedelics myself. I did not only heroic doses. Heroic doses are considered 5 grams of dried mushrooms. I ate 35 grams of dried mushrooms. I ate 100 grams of dried mushrooms in a course of 24 hours. I did all kinds of crazy experiments, let me tell you. And this creation never seemed mundane. Because if you have God in your heart, if you have love in your heart, if you have eyes to see, everything is absolutely beautiful. I just wish you could see that too. Psychedelics. So be careful with that. It can lead to some kind of uh, addiction. If not a physical addiction, because you can't really get physically addicted on psychedelics, uh, it can become a psychological addiction. Especially if your ordinary life kind of sucks and you got nothing going for you in ordinary life, then I can definitely see how these psychedelic peaks, they can become like a an escape Sure. And it becomes your sole purpose for living is just to escape into these psychedelic peaks. And that is not going to be healthy or sustainable in the long term. So be careful with that. Speaking of suicide, that's the next danger. Psychedelics can make some people suicidal for various reasons. Maybe because you feel like you're losing your mind. Maybe because you feel like life is meaningless. And you've fallen into some sort of nihilistic, solipsistic funk. Yep. Maybe because you've misinterpreted one of these visions or insights. Or had an incomplete awakening. Maybe because you've had some sort of derealization and you're stuck in that. Uh, or maybe because you want to merge and become one with God. That's not how you and do you it. Wanna, and you don't want to do that work <laughs> at the material level. So you just want to you want to quickly solve that through uh, some sort of physical suicide. So, of course, um, this would be very foolish. Uh, I recommend that you don't do this. I recommend that you don't harm your body at all. I recommend that you don't even consider suicide as a possibility for yourself. That's good to hear. Correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I heard is that you had a different stance on this. You actually even recommended suicide similar to Teal Swan. Now would be the time to apologize. And of course, if you're taking psychedelics and then you're noticing yourself having suicidal thoughts, then the first thing you should do is you should completely discontinue psychedelics for at least three to six months. Yep. Don't do them at all reground yourself in ordinary life but of course psychedelics can have the opposite effect too for many suicidal people 
psychedelics can actually be the cure. That is true. That's what happened to me. I had a severe illness. I was sick for over a year. And this is when I tried mushrooms for the first time. I was suicidally depressed prior to it. After the experience, I wanted nothing more than to live. It was beautiful. Because psychedelics can show you something beyond the material domain in which maybe your suicide is grounded in. Because if you're dissatisfied with the material domain, which a lot of suicidal people are, then um, what you're really looking for is you're looking for the spiritual domain, but you don't know how to access it because you can't meditate, you can't do yoga, you can't self-inquire, you know, you don't have those skills built up. Can pray. Can show you that higher domain. They can show you love. They can help you to deal with trauma. A lot of suicide is is rooted in trauma. They can help lift your depression. They can show you the miracle of life, uh, of life, the miracle of love, of consciousness, of God. And so in this sense, they can prevent suicide, but they can also cause suicide. It depends, right? It really depends on how you use it. Yep. The next is rolling the dice, basically. All right, that's it. I'm done here. Now you are aware of all the dangers of psychedelics. Contemplate them, take them serious. Yeah, now you're aware of the dangers of false gurus, not only of psychedelics. It is quite mind blowing to me that he doesn't see it. Maybe he does see it and simply wants to keep his business going. And decide for yourself whether this is something that you want to get involved with. I am not trying to convince you to do psychedelics. That's a decision you're going to make all by yourself. I just want to honestly outline their dangers. And I also want to talk about all their amazing potential benefits, which I've talked about in the past. And I'll talk more about in the future as well. And so now we're going to have a balanced perspective on these things. All right. Wow. So please remember to click that like button for me and come check out actualize.org. That's my website. All right, guys. And this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is. I believe it was a little less harsh than my last video on Leo. I would say a more balanced perspective, just as Leo said. However, we still see a deceived individual that is deceiving others. Willingly or unwillingly does not matter. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. What his true intentions are, we can not know, but the results of them are equally detrimental to his viewers. He didn't talk about himself at all. He simply laid out the dangers of psychedelics and pointed the finger instead of pointing that exact finger at himself and realizing his own pitfalls. He of course understands that those are the pitfalls that he has fallen into. This is why he addresses those. All of those side effects of psychedelics he experienced himself. But still his ego is holding him back from letting go and understanding that it is him. He is the false teacher. He is a false prophet, a false guru for one million followers. Anyways, this is it, as I said, long enough. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up or two if you could. If you're not subscribed already, guys, please do so. If you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. I'm sure you heard a million of other content creators say that, but really take a second, check it out. Maybe there's something for you in the description box that is useful. All right, this is it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.